Hello, my name is Johannes Stiegler. I'm a professor at the University of Munich, and my lab studies the molecular details of protein interactions on uh, chromosomes, particularly in the context of uh, chromosome organization and maintenance. And I am going to tell you today um, of our recent study that was published in Cell Reports in December of 2022. In higher eukaryotes, there are three major classes of SMC, structural maintenance of chromosome complexes, SMC56, SMC24, and SMC13. SMC24 um, is involved in the condensation of chromosomes, that's why it's got its own name, condensin, whereas SMC13 is also known as cohesin, because it is involved in sister chromatid cohesion and chromosome organization. SMC56, on the other hand, is much less known and it didn't even get its own name. But years of research have shown that SMC56 can be classified mostly as a DNA repair protein that is involved in the repair of lesions, also in the maintenance of replication forks, and also in the artificial lengthening of telomeres at D-loops. And in my lab, we studied the molecular details, how SMC56 complexes uh, get recruited to these um, sites and how it functions there. So as a workhorse experiment, we are doing um, DNA curtains in the lab and DNA curtains are a single molecule technique where we span hundreds of strands of parallel DNAs on a microsoidic chip and we can visualize um, these DNA strands um, in real time um, with turf microscopy. These DNA curtains are assembled in a microfluidic flow cell where we can add and remove protein um, complexes such as labeled SMC56 complexes and we can visualize how these complexes interact with DNA. And in a first experiment that we did, we realized that when we add SMC56 complexes to double-stranded DNA and add single-stranded DNA in trans, we noticed that under the turf microscope, we saw a recruitment of single-stranded DNA to double-stranded DNA, but only in the presence of SMC56. And we removed SMC56 from this reaction. We did not um, observe any captured single-stranded DNA to the double-stranded DNA. So to prove that this is really SMC56 that um, targets this recruitment, of single-stranded to double-stranded DNA. We, as a second step, labeled SMC56 with a quantum dot. And this is shown here, where you can see the captured single-stranded DNA that fluctuates on a tethered double-stranded DNA. On a tethered double-stranded DNA. Um, and when we add the second labeling reaction, we can see um, that we get the recruitment at exactly the same spots where SMC56 sits. So this tells us that SMC56 can bind single-stranded and double-stranded DNA simultaneously. And interestingly, this is um, exactly the substrates that SMC56 acts on um, under natural conditions, namely these lesions, and also in D-loops and at replication forks. So to targetly um, create substrates that resemble these um, single-stranded, double-stranded DNA junctions, we move to optical tweezers, where we can tether double-stranded DNA between two beads, and then we move one of the beads, and what will happen is that a random nix on the DNA, the DNA will unravel, expose single-stranded DNA. We have labeled RPA, single-stranded binding protein in solution, this fluorescently tagged RPA will um, coat the single-stranded part. And uh, we can do these experiments repeatedly by pulling and relaxing the DNA. And um, single-stranded parts get exposed and double-stranded parts, um, in this case, remain dark. So when we, have, when we add SMC56, labeled to um, this uh, to this reaction, what we will see is that SMC56 complexes get recruited both to the double-stranded parts in dark, to single-stranded parts that are coated with RPA in green, as well as to the junctions. And in fact, the junction fraction was 
be um, the, um, the most abundant in these experiments. So to prove that these junction sitting um, SMC56 complexes really sit on the junction and not um, close to them, what we did was we exposed these tethers to a flow in a perpendicular way. In this case, the uh, buffer flow comes from the top. This stretches out the unpeeled part of the DNA, as is shown here. And we find that SMC56 is primarily targeted to the junction um, of double-stranded and single-stranded DNA. So in vivo, how would SMC56 find these single-stranded, double-stranded DNA junctions? For this, we looked at um, timelines of how SMC56 finds um, its substrates. This is shown here as a video where we have in magenta SMC56 complexes and here shown as a chymograph where time goes to the right. And we find, interestingly, that SMC56 has almost immobile behavior on the single-stranded parts and on the junctions, but it is very mobile and diffuses in a two, um, in a one-dimensional diffusion manner on double-stranded DNA. This means that um, it would SMC56 complexes would translocate on double-stranded DNA until it encounters these junctions and then stabilize there um, as a target search mechanism. This brings me to our model. Um, what we showed was that um, at relevant substrates for SMC56, such as lesions, D-loops, and single-stranded DNA, uh, single-stranded, double-stranded DNA junctions, um, SMC56 gets recruited through these junctions either through direct recruitment from solution or, as we've shown, through 1D diffusion on double-stranded DNA until SMC56 complexes encounter these double-stranded, single-stranded DNA junctions. And we then think that SMC56 holds onto these junctions in a manner that is still not known. But nevertheless, it uh, prevents the collapse of these junctions by grabbing both the double-stranded and the single-stranded parts and prevent the um, displacement of RPA from these substrates. And um, as a second step, uh, we speculate that this then will lead to the activation of SMC56 through a SUMO subunit and later on through the, through the activation of um, downstream factors such as SGS1 and RAD52 or 59. In this study, we showed the recruitment of SMC56 complexes um, two lesion sites at the single molecule level. And we could, in the future, um, build upon these experiments and study um, on the recruitment of downstream factors as well as their activation.